Hi, I'm Steve, and welcome to I'd Rather Be Making. Today, I'd rather be making a place to store all of this. I wanted them near my computer for easy access, but organized better than a pile. I printed a USB stick organizer, it had some issues, and it's kind of boring. On Thingiverse, I found Askdale's Selenium Melkin, a very detailed model of the Millennium Falcon. In addition to the detail, I also like that this model is printed without supports, a feature I want to maintain in my mod. I needed to know how big to make the openings to hold the stuff. I measured the three different memory storage devices the Falcon will hold, so I can experiment on a test or a calibration fixture. That way, when I don't get things right on my first attempt, I don't waste time in PLA. To modify the Millennium Falcon model, I use Microsoft 3D Builder. If you have Windows 10, you might find you already have it installed. Just begin to type 3D Builder in the search bar. If it doesn't come up, you can get it for free at the App Store. I didn't want to print the whole Millennium Falcon model, modified with a lot of parts, and only to find out that nothing really fits in it properly. Or at all. So I thought I'd make a calibration fixture. Something I could print quickly, and not waste a lot of time, or PLA. To make this fixture, I took the measurements of the SD, USB, and micro SD cards and made representative shapes of them. I would then use those shapes and subtract them from the larger part. To subtract a shape from the model, click on Edit, Subtract. Whatever part is highlighted gets subtracted from its surroundings. If you have the larger part highlighted, it will be subtracted from your smaller part. Here I need to rotate the part to have the correct orientation. It's just easier to type in the degrees I need. That way you can be sure it's aligned properly. Then I printed that part so I could test the fit of the USB stick and the SD cards. If those shapes and that printer process work, I can then turn the Millennium Falcon into the Memory Falcon. Here it is. This is the surface it sits on, and that works. This is one of the side openings, and it doesn't work. The top sagged down right there, but I don't want to use supports, so I'm going to have to come up with something else. This has the same problem. It doesn't quite fit. The top right there sags down just a bit. Hey, that works. Got one of them right. Another try, another try. This one does work. Here's the bottom again, still works. Notice the taper on top there. It's self-supporting, so I can print it without using supports to dig out later. Did the same thing here. It works really good. And the SD slots are passing the drop test, or the shake test anyway. Yay. Back in 3D Builder, I started to work on the escape pod. This is the opening where a USB stick is going to be parked. This is basically the outer dimensions of a flash drive. Not quite tall enough though, so let's stretch that a bit. That'll work. Now I subtract this from the main model. Here are the micro SD slots. It's easy to get them to blend in with the lines that are already in the model. Here's the main area of the USB slots. I wanted them in an arc around the center gun, and I used a cylinder to align them. Once aligned, I just deleted the cylinder. When I finished all the mods, I exported the STL file. I opened Simplify 3D for slicing. I had the primary layer height at 0.15 millimeters to try to preserve some of the detail. I used three layers on the sides, top and bottom as well. Include a raft, I didn't on my first attempt and about 70% of the way through the file, the model just fell over. I wish I would have got that on video. And here it is printing using some sort of magical PLA beaming technology apparently. Here's the finished model, it looks kind of bland, there's a lot of detail that's just hidden. To bring out the details, I used black wash. Here's a recipe my kids use for their miniatures. Be sure to use distilled water, not tap water, or you could get mold growing underneath the, uh, the surface. 
Just mix it up and brush it on. You don't have to worry about being too uniform. You got plenty of time to move it around. The black wash will concentrate in the crevices, bringing out lots of detail. I was surprised at how well it worked. Almost immediately you could see a difference. And what doesn't go in the crevices leaves um, a little bit different texture, or not really texture, but a little different color than originally was. So here's the original. Here's my first attempt, and I forgot something on this model. Do you see it? No SD slots. So here we are. Got the SD slots. And here's the finished model. The micro SD slots almost disappear. It blends pretty well. It has a total of 14 micro SD slots, 12 USB docking ports, 10 SD card slots. Here's the escape pod docking. Perfect fit. Now to the desk. That looks better than the pile I had earlier, and it's still easy access. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. I need that. And if you want to see how I made that lamp and other videos, subscribe and hit the bell. Until then, keep making.